We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to look at the issue of uh, the national cash transfer and the fact that it will be ending. Shegun Shopito joins us this morning. Shegun, it's good to have you join us. All right, then. The National Cash Transfer Program, also known as Household Uplifting Program, is one of the social safety nets programs anchored by the federal government. The National Cash Transfer Program uh, was also initiated. It's that program that has four social investment, like I rightly mentioned, uh, with the federal government's present and supported by the World Bank. The program commenced in September 2016, and it was conceived as part of the government's uh, larger growth and social inclusion strategy aimed at addressing key social concerns in the country. And so uh, with all of the financial support from the uh, World Bank, it's also targeted at poor and vulnerable Nigerian households. Now, the beneficiaries of the program are mined from the National Social Register, comprising state social register of poor and vulnerable household. And that's what it is, because we know that a lot of people have constantly queried and asked, how do we identify the poor? you know, in our society. Meanwhile, the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, has revealed that 63% of persons uh, living in Nigeria, uh, 133 million people actually, are multidimensionally poor. Also, according to the 2022 Multidimensional Poverty Index survey, over half of the population of Nigeria uh, is living in that poverty. And so we're looking at a rate which is high, especially in the rural areas, where 72% of the people are poor compared to 42% of the people in urban you know, communities. And that's why we have Shegu Shokpiton, who joins us this morning. He's the chairman of ACT Network. That's the art network right here in Lagos. Thank you for joining us, Shegu. Thanks for having me, Good morning, Good morning, Nigerians. All right. Morning. Well, so, but quickly... Uh, what do you uh, make of this? First of all, what's your thoughts about, you know, social intervention program or net programs in our country? And secondly, do you think that this exact program has lived up to her expectation? Um, this, this program has been on for about six years now. And... Um, the government, by its own admission, has said that the primary objective of this program is poverty reduction. So if you want to answer the question about fared in the last six years, it's a, a poverty statistics um, to determine uh, you know, whether it's been successful or not. And... If, if the information available from the government agency itself is anything to go by, um, clearly this is not the case. Uh, poverty ratio has, has increased in the last six years in the country. Um, by the latest report from 72% of Nigerians living in multidimensional poverty, according to them. Um, Don't have we have a paucity of data. We don't have enough data to uh, sometimes analyze our situation and perhaps make decisions uh, regarding policy making and all of that. So um, it's difficult to speak very categorically, but I think the general data is that poverty rate on the average over the last six years um, has been increasing from around sixty percent. Um, six years ago to about 72% from the latest report of the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. Um, so which means that poverty has gotten worse. Um, and I think that if you then even disaggregate that the, the statistics further, you find that the irony is that the conditional cash transfer uh, project was targeted deliberately at rural dwellers, at rural dwelling Nigerians. And from the poverty statistics released by the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics, poverty has gotten worse in the rural 
local areas. You know, so urban poverty ratio in Nigeria from that report is 42%. In the rural areas, it's 72 You know, so it, it, the, the, the program clearly hasn't achieved its objectives. And I think that the reason for that is very simple. From the very onset, when this program was announced, a few months into the program, after looking at, um, you know, uh, the components and how it's, the government had laid it out and what they intended to do with it, it became clear that this, this was... Um, nothing but a tokenistic effort to to um, pander to uh, the public sentiment about poverty reduction and poverty alleviation. This was never a very well thought out and well uh, implemented or well orchestrated poverty reduction process. If you remember a couple of years ago, uh, I think it was about two years ago, Nigeria became what we now call the poverty capital of the world, overtaking India in terms of the number of people, the absolute numbers of people in poverty, and in terms of the speed with which people fall into poverty, you know, across those countries. India has been able to um, reduce its poverty prevalence significantly. And if you start what we are doing in Nigeria, you, you find that uh, we're just we're just clouding around, to be honest, with all <laughs> due regard to the people that are behind this program. So no, this program hasn't achieved its objectives. No, the government hasn't gone about this the right way. And um, in fact, there are other initiatives and other social safety um, net issues that the government has not even started to address at all. You know, so, so uh, them stopping it now, I think is a welcome development. I think we've just taken all of the hundreds of billions of naira that have been um, um, thrown at this project. And we've, and we've basically wasted it in quotes. Remember that truism that says that it is far better to teach a man how to fish rather than giving them fish to eat. What this program has been doing in the last six years is giving people fish to eat, even though they claim that there has been a capacity development um, element to this as well, but, but there is no evidence of that on ground. And if there is, maybe the government should show us uh, Shago, interesting um, uh, that you've talked about uh, some of how this, uh, you know, conditional cash transfer in Nigeria has worked. And I mean, I'm sure you agree with uh, experts who say that, you know, con conditional cash transfers pro transfer programs uh, have been, you know, an effective way to reconcile the, the social safety nets. In other words, you know, to, um, you know, reconcile and bring in general acceptance or assistance policies rather uh, they're talking about investment in human development and they're also looking at the fact that these social safety these are conditional cash transfers target the extremely poor um will it be fair for us to to say oh um because they they didn't teach them how to fish you know as you put it therefore this was not uh, uh, successful you know, will it be fair? You also talked about the fact that it targeted the raw areas. I mean, if we're talking about looking at those in the extremely poor bracket in, uh, in society, I'm sure you have to go to the raw areas to find them. We have 2 million persons who have been reached by the conditional cash transfer. Nigeria is a country of more than 150 million people. Even if the poverty rate is increasing in the country, especially in the rural areas, uh, we call it multidimensional poverty. Can we confidently assess the success of this program simply because the overall poverty rate has gone up? Yes, Kofi, we, we can because at the end of the day, um, keeping it very simple, uh, you know, that simple um, acronym KISS, -S, keep it simple. And, you know, I mean, there are all sorts of <laughs> variations of that. So, you know, uh, keeping things very simple is always a good way to ensure that you make progress. Um, the more complex and complicated um, your analysis is uh, with regards to an issue, the more likely it is that you may end up um, um, conflating issues and um, generally mixing things up. 
the primary objective of this program was poverty reduction. This is the government's um, um, own uh, self-admitted of program objective. That has not been achieved. Um, and unfortunately, we do not have enough data to, to, to disaggregate that and look at other components, you know, like you say, for example, um, as, a, as, as a part of the process of implementing this program, um, the government has built a social register, which is fantastic, you know. But where is that social register? Who are the people on it? Um, according to the uh, Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, um, uh, in the last two or three years, they've added, if I am not mistaken, I don't have the correct number, so pardon me on that. I think they've added about 6 million uh, households, 6 million households, something like that, to that register, right? So this ought to be a good thing um, because that will then give governments, uh, you know, um, in, in, uh, information about Nigerians that need help, and then you can target the type of help they need to them to bring them out of not just multi-dimensional poverty, but to actually help them with wealth creating initiatives that can, you know, grow um, the capacity of Nigerians. Yeah, but, 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 build, the um, Sorry to interject at the, this point. The question I was asking yeah. was this. Um, if the, we're hearing from the MBS that 133 million people in Nigeria living in poverty, this program has targeted and has been able to reach 2 million people. Is it easy to say, oh, because 133 Nigerians uh, or people in Nigeria are living in poverty, it therefore means, and that the poverty rate has increased, it therefore means that the, the conditional cash transfer as implemented by the government has been a failure. Uh, if you want to take yes. into context statistics and look at well, how many people are outside that 133 million, is it possible that you can find 2 million people or maybe 1 million people to say this 1 million have started their journey out of poverty? It's a journey. Is it also possible to, to, you, to, to pass a verdict in, in one year yeah. of receiving this money? No, but, but Kofi, when you, when you juxtapose that with the context of, of the duration of time that this program has been run for, uh, we're talking six years, Kofi, six years. This government has been in, 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 in office for seven years. And this was one of the first things that they started doing. Um, the, the various poverty alleviation, various social intervention programs, the conditional cash transfer program, the various uh, trader money, market money, you know, and all of those different programs all fell under the umbrella of social intervention. In six years, you have reached two million people. In those six years, the number of people living in poverty has increased to 133 a whopping 60 to 70 percent of your entire population i don't think there is any other definition for failure you know so yes we can decide to look at it from a glass half well uh, you can't say half full so you can say maybe you can decide to look at it from a glass uh, one over eight full or one quarter full rather than um uh, three over four or three quarters empty you know it's a matter of perspective. But, so you can say, yes, the journey has started. But then, how can you be talking about a journey commencing at the end of the journey? I mean, for goodness sake, this government is going out of office in months. In just a matter of five, six, seven, eight months, they're out. So in the eight years that they've been there, they've set themselves an objective of reducing poverty. They have been unable to do it. I don't know what other way you want to define failure. This program has failed spectacularly. And the reason for that, Kofi, and this, that's where I was going, it's very simple. You do not alleviate poverty by giving handouts. I, I, I would have thought that this was just simple common sense. You don't need to be an economist. You don't need to be, you know, some sage wisdom, uh, blessed with supernatural wisdom to know that you cannot alleviate poverty by dashing people money. So, you but, alleviate but, uh... poverty by giving people the capacity to create money. So and let's even further happen. talk about this uh, Shokpiton because uh, I don't know if you think that this is an irony what we talk about 
these programs and the fact that if you look at the rural communities, there's nothing to write them about. You talk about infrastructure. Uh, the standard of living is poor, no road infrastructure, I mean basic infrastructure not available in this community. So how do we um, say that these programs or social net programs of government has helped, you know, the people out of poverty? Yeah, you know, so that's, that's a different angle to the conversation. Very clearly, um, the process of reducing poverty in a society is uh, let me borrow there what is a multi-dimensional process there are many facets to it there are many elements that need to be addressed so there's no way you can create wealth there's no way you can have economic development and progress without certain um uh, issues within that society being addressed infrastructure is a fundamental one availability of social services is another fundamental one availability of the appropriate enabling and con conducive regulatory policy environment and framework is another one. All of these things have been, you know, this government has been trying to address. I guess we can give them that in their own way. But, you know, the, the jury is out as to how, how, how well they've done, you know, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of any of these things that I've mentioned. Where were we? In 2015, where are we now? And if you don't deal with those things, you can't bring people out of poverty. You need power to bring people out of poverty. Where were we on power power supply in 2015? Where are we now? We have stagnated. If we and and saying we stagnated is being charitable. Some would argue that we've regressed. You know, so so yes, if all of if those things are not dealt with, you can't even fix poverty. All right, uh, Shagun Shopitong, uh, Chairman ACT Network. It's been uh, through having you on the breakfast this morning and uh, hope to have you in the studio live next time. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. All right. And that's the size of our package on the breakfast uh, this morning. It's going to be quite interesting. We're looking forward to having you here uh, tomorrow. Well, that's it. It's okay to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Abukbo. Have a fantastic Monday morning. And my name is Kofi Bartels, and enjoy the rest of the day. Join us for the news at 9.